Hello viewers, welcome once again to ITTV. How have you been? I hope that you've been well and ready to start a new lesson with me. In this lesson, we are discussing Chapter 1 of the Form 4 Additional Mathematics Syllabus, which is the chapter on functions. We started off this chapter with a broad discussion of relations, meaning to say how values which are called objects are corresponding to values which are called images. But in this lesson, we're going to go into a bit more detail and discuss the topic of functions. Recognizing a function as a special relation. In mathematics, a function is a special relation that uniquely associates each object in the domain to one element in the codomain. I hope viewers that you do remember the words domain and codomain and what they stand for. The domain would be the values where the objects lie and the codomain would be the values where the images lie. But more about that in a short while. In short, a function relates each and every object in the domain to one and only one image in the codomain. A function is therefore a many-to-one relation or a one-to-one -one relation. Let me give you a real-life illustration of what is the meaning of many-to-one relation and one-to-one -one relation. Take for example a working adult who is allowed to own more than one credit card to his name. Perhaps he has a Citibank MasterCard for example and he may also have a HSBC MasterCard or even another public bank Visa card. These are all just examples of credit cards that a working adult may own. Now, he, this is a case of many to one relation. Several cards belong to one owner. But it's not the same case with your identity card. Each and every one of us is only allowed to possess one identity card and that is what we call a one-to-one -one relation. But of course, in this lesson, we're going to discuss functions on a more mathematical level. So let's move along. Consider the functions below. In the diagram on the left, we have three objects, A, B and C which correspond to two images, which are 1 and 2. Object A has the image of 1, but both objects B and C share the same image of 2. That makes it a many-to-one relation. And according to our definition, viewers, a many-to-one relation is a proper function. In the second diagram, we have objects 3 and 4, which are mapped onto elements D and E respectively in the codomain. Although element F in the codomain is not an image of any of the objects, nevertheless, this diagram still shows us a function because every object in the domain bubble has been accounted for. That's something important to take note of viewers. Every time we want to define something as a function, we must ensure that every single value in the domain bubble, which is the object values, must have an image in the corresponding codomain bubble. Here's an example for us to try. Identify which of the following relations are functions. Give a reason for your answer. In part A, we have a set of four ordered pairs which are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 2, 4. Part B shows us a diagram where we have objects 1, 2 and 3 mapped onto the images of 1, 2 and 3 as shown. Part C shows us a graph where the objects are the values in the x-axis and the images are the values in the y-axis. Now that's something for you to remember, viewers. And finally, in part D, we have an arrow diagram where objects A, B and C are mapped onto a codomain which contains elements X, Y and Z. Coming back to part A, the set of ordered pairs, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 2, 4, show that this is a function because every object in the domain has one unique image only in the codomain. Might be a bit difficult to see 
in an ordered pair form viewers. Let's go over to the board and try to change this into an arrow diagram representation so that it's easier for us to identify whether or not it is a function. You might want to draw this diagram out together with me, viewers. You could always draw two bubbles, the left being for the domain and the right being for the co-domain, and fill in the first number from each ordered pair in your domain bubble, the second number from each ordered pair into your co-domain bubble. Then we can draw the arrows to match up the, res the respective uh, objects with their images. So, negative 1 has the image of 1, meaning to say that I should join negative 1 to 1 over here. And 0 has the image of 0, meaning that it goes over to here. Take note that the object of 1 also has the image of 1, while 2 and 4 can be joined this way. Now, as you can see from this diagram, we have a case of many to one relation. But that is defined as a function, viewers. So this set of ordered pairs does show us a function involved. It is quite an interesting thing if you think of the objects having the arrows shooting out to their images. As a function, every object needs to have one arrow shooting out to its own image, meaning to say that each object value must have only one unique image in the codomain set. As you can see, although negative 1 and 1 share the same image, but each of them only has that one image, which is the value of 1. That makes it a function. Now look at part B. In this diagram viewers, we see that although the object 1 has only one image, which is also 1, However, object 2 is mapped onto two images, which are both 1 and 2. Or in other words, you could say that there are two arrows shooting out from the object value of 2 to hit two other numbers in the image section. Now that makes it a one-to-many relation, viewers, and that is not a function. The same is happening to the object 3. It has two images, which are 1 and 3, or loosely putting it, there are two arrows shooting out from the object 3 to go to ob images 1 and 3 respectively. So, to conclude, for part B, it is not a function. The object 2 in the domain has two images 1 and 2 in the codomain, and you can say the same reason for object 3. In part C, the graph shows us as the domain, the objects are names of various people, while the codomain contains the letters A, B, C, D. It is not a function for now because Ahmad, the object Ahmad in the domain has no image. You will observe from the diagram that all the other objects, namely Chong, Salina, Ravi, John and Chalani, all have their own respective images. And in fact, all of the objects only have one image each, with the exception of Ahmad who has no image. Therefore, it is not a function because not all the objects have been mapped onto their corresponding images. However, viewers, if you were to remove Ahmad from the graph, you will actually be able to say that the remaining objects will have their own unique images. And therefore, without the object Ahmad in the picture, the rest of the objects will have a unique image each. Hence, the relation will form a function. For part D, we have objects A, B and C, which are mapped onto images X and Y, where B and C share the same image of Y, making it a many-to-one relation again. And it, this is a function because every object in the domain has a unique image in the co-domain. Do take note of this interesting fact, viewers. 
Although the value of z in the codomain has no object that it belonged to, nevertheless, we still call this a function because each and every value of the objects in the domain have been accounted for. Now that we know how to identify whether or not relations are functions, it is also important to know how to write them. And we are moving on now to this new topic or new idea called function notation. Expressing functions using function notation. In mathematics, a function can be represented by the alphabet F. The image of a function f with object x is denoted by f bracket x, which is read as f of x. There are many ways to describe or represent a function. Firstly, we have diagrammatic representation. And viewers, diagrammatic representation is something that we've been discussing for the past few lessons. But there is actually one more way to also represent a function. Part 2, we have the formula way to represent a function. The function of the following relation can be written as, and if you take a look at the diagram viewers, you will see how all the objects are mapped onto the images by the relation of 2x. Now this can be written in notation form either as part 1 which is to be read as the function of f maps x to 2x. Take note viewers that the arrow indicates the phrase maps to. I'll repeat that statement for part 1. The function of x maps x to 2x or alternatively you can use the notation in part 2 which is to be read as 2x is the image of x under the function f. Hope you got that, viewers. 2x is the image of x under the function f. Now, viewers, this is just a simple example of the way that we can write functions out in notation form. And we're going to look at many, many more examples in the lessons to come. What have we learned from this lesson, viewers? Well, we learned firstly that although a relation is basically a connection between an object and an image, there are special relations which we call functions. And particularly, functions are either many-to-one relations or one-to-one -one relations. We looked at several examples which helped us to identify whether or not a relation was a function in the first place. And finally, we also had a quick look at function notation, but that's going to be discussed in more detail in the lessons to come. Well, that's it from us this time around, viewers. As always, remember that the more you practice in maths, the better you will be, and you will find yourself improving and even enjoying your maths. So happy learning to you, and goodbye from ITTV.